Murph operates in Bundaberg by Impact Community Services under contract to Bundaberg Regional Council. So the Murph has been in operation for about 25 to 30 years. It originally was a small shed that took in uh, small quantities of product to be recycled, growing to what it is now, processing around about 8,000 tonne of product per annum, with a recovery rate of about 82% of recycled goods. So if we receive 8,000 tonne, what we collect is that 82%. That is actually sent to recycling. The remainder is product that's been contaminated or is not recyclable, and unfortunately that goes through to the landfill section of the business. The start of the process is Bundaberg Regional Council collect your yellow top bin from your house. Those products are product that's clean, lids off, not packed up in plastic bags, things like cans, aluminium cans, um, soft drink bottles, milk bottles, and if possible give them a rinse out, take the, the lid off and put them in loose. If they're bagged up we do not sort those or open those bags, they will go straight through to the landfill and thus it defeats the purpose of, of recycling. They are then brought in those council curbside trucks through to the MRF. They're received in the receiving area where the council driver has already gone over the council weighbridge so we know exactly the weight of the product coming in so each truck Traditionally, it sits around four to five tonne of recycled product. It comes in to the MRF, it backs up and rear unloads onto the belts. Each load is recorded so we know exactly when, what truck number, registration is received into the MRF and the volume of product that comes in. So once the product is received into the receiving area, then is fed through to the uh, first belt that comes into the MRF. That belt is a gravity belt that climbs into the MRF operation and all of the product that comes in goes through this first point. So the first sort station has two supported employees that carry out the sorting and the removal of large items, particularly metal, large metal items that you may have placed in the bin. These large items can get caught in, in machinery and, and clog up the, the machinery lines. So the remainder of the product then is fed through into our trommel. The trommel is a large rotating tunnel that have holes in the metal uh, tube which are rate from 100 millimetres through to about 50 millimetres. The product rotates around there and drops through. So broken bottles, broken glass, those types of products drop out and then collected uh, onto a belt underneath and they are then pushed out to a glass fines bin and we get that sent through to Brisbane to a company called EnviroSands who turn that broken glass into mediums such as filter mediums, road base mediums, things that are used in uh, every, everyday uh, commercial businesses. So the products that then exit the trouble fall onto a, what we call a bounce belt. And the bounce belt is effectively sorting the light product and the heavier product. The light product being the paper and cardboard that you put in your recycle bin, and that's pushed off onto a separate belt and goes up to our sorting line. What we do there is we have four staff members that select any contaminants of that paper. So it might be loose plastic, uh, might be bottle tops, chip packets, things like that that aren't either paper or cardboard, they get taken off and get sent back through the MRF operation. The paper commons, as we call it, and the cardboard is then carried by automated belt into an automatic baler. A very large baler that bales up the cardboard and paper commons into 750 kilo bales. That is a continuous operation. They're picked up by forklift and transported to our storage area where we would store anything up to about 50 tonne of paper commons or cardboard in preparation for it to be collected, to be taken to Visi Recycling at Gibson Island in Brisbane. The items that come off the bounce belt that are heavier are predominantly full bottles, 
metal cans, aluminium cans, those types of products. They then transport up into the MRF factory where they go through a magnetic uh, situation where it collects all the metal cans, cans like dog cans, uh, cans of fruit, predominantly steel cans. They go off into a cage where they're baled separately. The remainder of products, aluminium, plastic, and the remainder of products go along a line in front of 10 of our supported employees. Each of those supported employees has a process that they select products that they're on the station for, being aluminium cans, glass bottles, one and two litre Coke bottles, smaller ones, but also your large two litre milk bottles and things like that. The remainder of products go through will we'll capture plastics. So plastics are things like your dishwashing liquid bottles, your um, fabric softeners that you may use in your washing of your clothes, things like that. So each item is selected for the, that picking station and they're thrown into large cages in preparation for baling. So all of the products that have been then collected into the cages, so like the steel cans, aluminium cans, those types of individual products, they are then processed and baled. So they go onto a separate line, a automated belt, that feeds them into a large baler. Because they are continually changing products that they bale, uh, they're manual balers, they are not automated. They would bale predominantly around about 15 to 20 tonne of product a day. And those bales are then taken away from the, the factory and they're stored again in preparation to be collected by uh, some trailers and BWs to go to Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. So the product that then passes by all of the sorters, that is the leftover product that uh, is predominantly no value waste product, goes through a automated belt out into a large 30 metre skip bin and we collect that product and then that is taken directly to council landfill on a daily basis. We weigh that product so that we know exactly what has been left out of our processes. So what has come in versus what we've collected and then what has gone to landfill. We have a new process within the MRF operation. We collect 44 gallon drums from companies within the Bundaberg region. Instead of sending those products to landfill, we crush those drums. We have uh, two new drum crushing units and they effectively put a 44 gallon drum and crush it into a disc which then can be sent through to Sims Metal in Wacol and Brisbane to be recycled into new metal products. So there are a few things that uh, we get at the MRF that should not actually go into the recycling bin and a couple of those items are things like batteries. Batteries should not go into recycle bins. They are recyclable but they are quite dangerous. So if you've got batteries that you want to recycle, please take them directly to the council waste facilities and hand them into the battery recycling section of the council facility. So we get some interesting things that occur in, uh, that we receive here at the material recovery facility. Things like live snakes. Recently we've had a very large python who decided it wanted to come on a trip to the MRF and come up through the belt and when the boys went to pick it up were quite uh, stunned that it was still alive and ready to have fun with them. So we get some contaminated products here at the MRF things that shouldn't go in the bin. So if you're looking at items that are difficult for us to, to handle and our staff to handle, are things like baby nappies. Please don't put your baby nappies into the recycle bin. They go into your normal waste bin. Other items would be chemicals. If you've got leftover chemicals that they've used in the, the yard or in the, on the farm, they don't go into the recycling bin either. They need to be taken into the council waste facility to the chemical section. And the last and the most dangerous would be sharps. So we would prefer that no one put any used needles or sharps into a recycle bin because our people have to pick up all of these items by hand and they don't need to get any unexpected jabs. So if you're recycling at home, remember, recycle and recycle right.